Hello everybody, welcome back to today's video. Today we're going to learn how to port forward to allow for people to connect to your Minecraft server on your home PC. Let's get started. I just want to make it clear to everybody watching this video, my IP has changed after the video and I spent two hours editing this and blurring everything for no reason. Alright, so start enjoy. off, I just want to say this guide, I'm going to be going off of my router, which I have at home. Every single person, and mostly every single person, depending on your ISP, which is your internet service provider, will have a different way of doing this now what i recommend doing is the thing that the isp gives you your internet service provider gives you that is your router which is that physical box that they give you that like they connect up and everything that is what you're going to need for this video and it's going to be required and i'm going to put a few p photos on the screen right now of what it looks like and normally on the bottom of it there's going to be like a little sticky note that includes a lot of information this information you're going to need for the video one of those things will be the ip address to your console at home normally it starts with 192 point something that's just your normal 168.1 or something one of those things would be the recommended one that they're probably going to give you depending on your location so that will be shown on the bottom you're going to need your username and the password for that as well and there may be a, a um there may be another little tab of like an authorization code or something you're going to need to write all those down because you're going to need that for this tutorial in my case i use at&t and i have an at&t fiber router which is a little different than other people's routers but pretty much the steps all the same for at&t of course if you have any issues with this your isp themselves can support you if you contact them online i've emailed them before when i was having issues because they had a firewall up or anything and they were very helpful on helping me get that down they don't charge for that or anything they can help you online but do be aware port forwarding can open up your home pc to possible hacks and stuff because you're opening up the port online which means anybody can connect from anywhere in the world to your that port on your router which i highly advise against unless you have firewalls and know what you're doing another thing which may be an issue with um port forwarding for you is if you have a rotating IP address. Most ISPs in the US at least have static IP addresses for the routers now, which I'll explain in a minute. You have moving IP addresses for behind the router, but the IP address for the router itself is static, which means every IP behind it shifts, but the router itself is static, which is a good thing in my opinion, because I can change my IP anytime I want. I have a business plan with AT&T and they, they're a little flexible. I just have to contact them about that. So. That's just how it works for me. Some won't allow you to change from a, a static to a moving IP and everything. But for all of that, I can go into more detail in the comments if you want to ask about that. So, how do you port forward is the question. Well, first, you're going to enter that little IP you got on the back of your router. And it's going to be like 192.168.1.254 or something like that. That's going to be the thing you're going to type into your web browser. They will take you to a page that looks like a sign-in menu. Or if it's going to look like this if you're using t and t In terms of signing in, it will say, hey, enter your username and password. The username and password are on the back of the router. Again, here's a picture of the router itself. It will pop up on the screen right now. And that's where you're going to actually put all your information in. Now, half the things on this page for you are going to be blurred because it is security and I'm just I, I'm blurring it for my own safety here. But pretty much what you're going to need to go to is you're going to see something like settings or customized firewall or one of these things. In this case, I'll go to settings because most of you will have a settings tab and then have a firewall tab here. So you'll go settings, firewall or something. You just want to find the firewall tab for your router on your systems. In my case, it's under the firewall tab and there's going to be a lot here if you use something that I use. Now down here, you can see that I have a bunch of allowed applications. The port numbers for you are going to be hidden except for the 25565 and same with the public IP address. The reason for this is to protect my IP and my house and everything else. But you can see that there are allowed applications. Like I do allow some ports for different Minecraft and other things. The only one you can actually see is Minecraft because this is actually hidden behind a secondary firewall for my house. So that's pretty cool. And then you have your applications DMZ tab, which is going to be the one we're going to be taking a look at in a moment. It may take a moment to load. It's, it's a little slow when you're port forwarding just because it's going to your router through your house and everything. And it could take a second, especially if you are on Wi-Fi. It may take a little bit longer to load depending on the type of router you have and the internet speed you have. So this is the one that we're going to be using for the AT&T setup is the applications, pinholes, and DMV tab. So pretty much first, all of your devices by default are blocked from accessing the internet on an external thing with AT&T at least it does so you actually have to choose which one you want in our case it's noodles 2 
I'm going to choose noodles too. And this is, we're going to open up this port. Now, normally maximum protections selected for every single device, which means it's not going to allow any traffic of any single web thing into your servers. That's what you want if you're not running a server. But if you want to port forward, you're going to select the one you want and you can ignore the IP address. You don't need that. And you're going to say allow individual applications. Like you can see here, I already have it and I have some hosted applications, which are probably blurred. So you can't get the ports. But anyway, um, so by default, uh, the ag and gives you some games. They give you like Age of Empires and they have all of these already set up for you. What this means is this is already set up in terms of port forwarding. All you have to do is select it, press add, and it automatically ports forwards for you. But sadly, because it's not, it's at t they don't have Minecraft in here. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to press add a new user defined application. And you're just going to click this. That will take you to a new page, which may take a moment to load. And you're going to name it. You can name it like Minecraft 2 or something, whatever you want. And you're going to have to do this two times. You're going to have to do it for TCP and you're going to have to do it for UDP. And then for your port, it's going to be whatever port your Minecraft server is running on. In my case, it's 25565. 25565. Same with the protocol timeout. You can just use the default. So for TCP, just enter 86400 seconds. And then you can leave this blank. The application type, you can leave blank as well. And all you have to do is click add to list. Since I already have it, um, I'm not going to do that. But then you can go back. And it's going to take you back to the page where you have your list of things. And all you're going to have to do is do this exact same thing again. But this time, use for UDP. So we're going to go do that again. We're going to go back, and I'm going to show you what you're going to do. So it would take you back to this page. I don't know why it's taking so long. And all you have to do is, once again, select the computer you're using. Every time, sadly, AT&T makes you select the, user, the computer you're using. And then you are going to click on to the same thing, add a new user defined and then you'll see it um, open up the page again. I, I don't know why this is taking so long to load. Normally it doesn't take this. Add a new user to find. And this time you're going to do the exact same thing you just did with, uh, you can name it like MC UDP or something. I don't know. Uh, select UDP 25565, 25565 or whatever port you're running. 600 seconds and keep everything else the same and just press add to list. That's all you have to do, it adds it automatically. Now, we have successfully added our ports, but we haven't actually port forwarded yet. So now we're actually gonna port forward. Going back to this, you're gonna choose your computer again. Yes, you have to do it again. I don't know why AT&T is being weird about this. Um, you have to choose it again, and this time, you can go ahead and scroll down, and you're on your applications list, you're gonna be able to find your custom one. In my case, it's MC here. I already added it, but you'll find it in the list on the left. All you have to do, let's say if I wanted to open up an Age of Empire server, I would click add, and it would ask you for an access code. For me, it's already filled in, and then luckily it's hidden, so I don't have to blur that again. The access code is the one that's located on the back of your router, and that just keeps security to making sure I you don't like overdo it and you don't have everything wrong here on the settings page and you're not a hacker trying to get in or anything so it's going to load and it's going to say configuration successful you can see age of empires have been added and of course if you want to unport forward you can always just click remove and it will remove it from your user defined hosted applications list and you will no longer have that port open so once you open it and I add your mc add both your mc for udp and ct uh, cpt and udp here you have successfully port forwarded now of course, this may be completely different. It may look completely different for you on your end. All you have to do is look up port forwarding router or your router name. So what I would do is port forwarding router AT&T or whatever you have. Enter your router type. So like if you wanted the router BGW210. And you can see they have in a whole um, forms and everything on how you can port forward it. They have all these steps and everything. And it will count you to through setting it up for yours. And of course, there's hundreds of YouTube videos on YouTube talking about the different routers and how you set each of them up. So that is pretty easy and pretty nice. And it's it's all built into this one thing. I apologize if half the screen was blurred during this video. I don't want to get attacked and I don't want to get hacked in this video. So I apologize if it was partially blurred or fully blurred at points during the video. But I hope my explanation kind of helps you on your end and you can step yourself through it. Of course, you can ask any questions you want down in the comments and I'd be happy to help you out. I'll see you next time.